Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic. Welcome to Five Idiots. Uh, my character is a level five fighter, crossbow expert, sharpshooting fella. Hello everybody, I am uh, Elliot the Nom, a, uh, a rock gnome, a level five uh, cleric of the life domain. Am I level five? Yeah, we're all you level are level five. five. Okay, okay. I'm Florio Snarf. Well, I'm Dale because but I'm playing Florio Snarf. There's a uh, Goblin Sorcerer. Oh. And very, Goblin uh, King, don't forget that. Yes, I'm, I'm very good at being king of nothing. I'm very <laughs> bad at being Sorcerer. Hello, I'm Dimi Dimitriov. X-Man, level 5 fighter. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and stealer of, uh, of services from misspelled tree. <laughs> I'm a stealer I of services. I've, still, I've got a couple of days to make some money. It's fine. Fine. It's fine. They have credit uh, cards in D&D, &D, right? Mm. Say again? They have credit cards in D&D, &D, right? You don't want to go there, dude. Then, then you're dealing you're with uh, then, then you're dealing with uh, Rolock Don Knackle in his in his lesser known mafia form. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy, <laughs> the cheese has been running for fourteen days. <laughs> Slavery, yeah, amen. Oh, sounds man. like sounds like working for Kalorn. We're going to have to break your knees. <laughs> Let me. Right. Oh man. All right. So, um, wow, that was a, that was a hell of an intro. I'm always amazed at how it takes us. <laughs> we've been saying that the same thing for what 13 weeks, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> and it still takes. It still it still fumbles out of our mouths. It's literally the hardest thing to say in the entire show. Is something that I say the same thing every week. It's yeah. It's yeah. By far the toughest it. part. I mean, for Elliot, you would think the hardest part of the show would be getting dressed, but. <laughs> For Elliot, nope, it's getting hard. <laughs> that, that, that hat is godly, isn't it? Oh, that hat is just godly, yes. Okay, so at the end of last episode, you guys threw a, threw a, threw a chink in the works there, a, a, a sabo into the uh, machine, if you will, and decided to go instead to, uh, to Steelbury. Um, Elliot's, I don't want to call it a former haunt, it's still his hometown. But uh, the place where Elliot decided to uh, to abandon his people and head out into the world. I was on and, sabbatical. And, 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 say again? I was on sabbatical. I didn't abandon anybody. <laughs> it was a sabbatical. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And um, you have since returned. So um, one of the things we talked about, So and you have a, uh, a single uh, cultist in tow. And Elliot has been uh, has been. I don't want to say good cop, bad cop. Elliot's been um, been working on the old psychological game with him, right? Trying to trying to drill some info out of him. Um, Elliot, was there anything that you wanted to kind of? Because one of the things we talked about is if you thought about it a little bit, was there anything you'd want to go back and maybe ask him some more, or have some of that conversation go on before moving into Steelbury proper? Oof! Wow, you, 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 you're tempting me here. I feel like <laughs> uh, I I wasn't planning on it, but then I, I I guess just before, you know, we we've been chatting throughout the you know throughout the journey, you know, little bits here and there. Like, I I was I was pretending to you know be be after getting in the court, so I was trying to keep it quiet. Well, at least pretending to try and keep it quiet from the other. So we've just been having a stash of conversation here and there. So yeah, before we head into town, I. I, I I go back to him and and you know have 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 one last chat with him and I say yeah we're, we're approaching we're approaching Steelbury now, uh, my friend. Um, at some point over the next few days we will be returning, uh, to uh, to Night Demon. Um, you you talked a lot about those worms last time. Uh, yeah, are, are you still? He, he did. Are you, are you still? Yeah, are you still? Are you still all about eating the worms? Genuine question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so, so, so your question is: Are you still all about eating the worms? I don't. I'm. I'm well, gonna make sure that I understand the question. Oh, so, so yeah. Let me rephrase it. So, so last time we spoke, you know, you you made eating the worms seem like a really good thing, and I'm I'm thinking 
when we go back, yeah, we should try and eat the worms as well. Yeah, like like I said, <laughs> for fuck's sake, Jimmy. Like I said, yeah, we're trying to. Uh, yeah, I I I um, yeah, I, I like what I saw of Night Demon, you know, and I I realized that you know you and my God somewhat dead to me. I need a new I need a new master. So so yeah, what 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 can you tell me more about? Yeah, you know, what eating the worms has uh, you know has in store, and and how and how that relates to Night Demon as well, I guess. Okay, so if you so let's 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 go back and do a little little rem, rem, reminder, right? So he had told you because you had asked not similar questions, but you had asked a similar line, I guess, right? And you had and he had mentioned how he had asked you, did you find the um, oh god, what did we call it? The when you were in the temple, did you find oh, the, the breeding, um, the spawning grounds, or something? The yeah. spawnings, yeah. Thank you. And you would, and you were like, "Wait, what?" Right. So that was obviously mm. something that you have no idea about. And he had mentioned that there were several individuals who had, who had, who had been elevated there, right? <clears throat> and he said that he was next in line. This was a conversation on the way down. He was next in line for elevation, right? And you would ask yes, him what yes. that. Yep. You had asked him what that meant, and that was in regards to, you know, becoming one of these abominations. Right, um, so you is the cultist going to become a worm? Uh, say again. Is the cultist going to become a worm? No, there was well, big hulking abomination guys. Yeah, you haven't it. seen the any. You haven't seen any any um, evidence of anybody becoming a worm. But what you have seen is you've seen the regular cultists consuming, right pieces, and when they consume pieces, they got faster and stronger and healed. You saw the worms when they consumed any meat so far. You can't, you have been able to, you, you've only seen basically one experiment, if you want to call it that, of when they ate um, um, Omar and um, some of the other cultists that were dead, right? And then the worms would heal. And then you've seen the abominations consuming large quantities of the worms. And then they had, they, um, they were like gargantuan, right? Like their muscles were literally splitting their skin. They were growing so much. Um, it wasn't that the, you know, like when, when a bodybuilder gets big, the skin starts to stretch, you get more skin. But this was happening. You, you, you. Why would you, anyone want to become an abomination? Okay. So are you asking the, the cultists this? Or are you asking this like of your party is what I'm getting at? Because we'll have to go back to well, Elliot's question first. I don't think they're the sharpest tools in the box for our ghost now. <laughs> well, I mean... I think so, that's the answer. Well, that, that's the question, right? What, what does... When somebody joins a cult, what are they usually looking for, right? Companionship, like-mindedness, they're usually outcasts. Da, 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 right, and then you've got your your keys to the power, but right? Abomination, well, like the, it literally means disgusting. But right, look, well, that's what we call them. But see, look, it's like it's like it's the Middle Ages, right? And there's no there's no blood bowl to play. There's no internet to go on. What? <laughs> so they just <laughs> don't say that, Jim. We haven't gotten there yet. There may very well be blood bowl in this Gotta do something. But it's like, why would anyone want to be a bloody Nurgle follower, right? In Warhammer or, or like even Corn? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there you it's... go. That's a great. That's a great way to put it, Jim. I mean, Thank that, you. That I just a great I just way assume to put it. that you're born like that right if you're born an abomination but if you can actively choose to become an abomination like that's super fucking weird you're just deranged losers i guess like an average blood bowl 3 discord user <laughs> okay so, so elliot now knowing what you know is there a different way you want to phrase it or is that phrase fine? <laughs> We found out the origin of the cults. <laughs> Did you hear me, Elliot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was just waiting for the hubbub to die down and you know, buy myself thinking time. I, I don't know. Um, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like there's obviously an opportunity here to ask some interesting stuff. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know really where to go with it. Um. Uh, Maybe maybe somebody else wanders over during the conversation and uh, you know lend, lends their voice. 
No. So I, I <laughs> okay, so okay, just, okay, fine. <laughs> if I wander over, I'm just gonna be provoking him, right? Now. Okay, well, no, fine. Let's let's look at this, right? So, you guys know what Stockholm syndrome is, right? Yes. Okay, so. When you spend I'm amount an amount of time everyone with everyone knows what it is here. <laughs> yeah, when you spend an amount of time with somebody or something, you know, you eventually develop a bond, if you will. It doesn't have to be a close bond, but it's a bond, right? Yeah, like we all have oh. a blood bowl. Yeah. So, <laughs> and we, and so, we're a Jack bowl. A James hey, bond. Hey, hey, hey. So <laughs> we'll say that if you guys want to ask him oh, questions, he will today. he will be most agreeable with Elliot mm. but he's not going to just simply ignore the the other three or four of you Elon wouldn't really ask any questions he's not just going to ignore the four of you right he's gotten used to you he's seen Daka Daka's come over maybe Daka's not the nicest guy but when Elliot's not there Daka comes over and hands him a glass of water right or a mug of water Elliot may walk it's over his evening ra- I'm sorry Dimitri may walk over his evening rations whatever it is and it's just building that have you report? guys agreed to this? Are you guys actually handing him your water and your rations? Yeah, of course. We, we, we're I, trying to get information out of him, and the, the stick insane. isn't going to work. The we're trying to keep him alive, alive as well. He just needs to eat to, yeah. <laughs> to survive. Yeah. Why when, are we trying to keep him alive? Though? When I um, when I when I help because him we out might be able water. to sacrifice him instead of one of the three women. Sorry, carry what? on, Dimmy. Well, when I when I help him out with water, what I do is I I, I tip him backwards on a on a lump of wood. I put a bag over his head and then I I I, I, I pour the water into his mouth for him. That's really kind to me. Yeah, you know. That's an inventive way of serving water. Funny enough, that's how we served those goblins, didn't we? Our very first our very first ever D and D session. Okay, so. So, Elliot, so your question is kind of revolving around why would you want to elevate yourself, essentially? Um, yeah, I, I suppose so. I guess I go a bit back to, to the cultist and his path and why why he became a cultist and why he wants to eat the worms and you know, become an abomination. So when, when he says when, when you say that, you know, he obviously he comes back and he re-mentions again that those who 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 the night demon calls are the ones who who have made it in it basically made it into the cult right so he keeps talking about this calling like he doesn't yes he, it, it wasn't something that he researched it wasn't something that it's there's a calling he's he keeps mentioning this calling i was called yeah i was called to the night demon side i was called to the so on and so forth yeah so yeah when in what form did this calling take you when were you called how were you called you know how how did you hear your god how, how did you? Oh, I, um, so he goes back into just uh, again, same from last session. He just tells you it's it was just an innate feeling. There was just something in me that drove me, that drove me here. There's this is what I am meant to do in life. This is who I am meant to become. Elliot waves and leaves. <laughs> okay. Um, I think he he's had obviously a, getting tea. I think he had a calling. He had a calling, yeah, now that's a calling. See, that makes sense why somebody want to have a lovely, a delicious, warm meal. <laughs> a succulent Chinese meal. <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense to want your muscles so big that they rip your skin, does it? But never mind. Elliot, Elliot got Pai Wei. Nice headlock. <laughs> <laughs> I see you know your judo well. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. Sorry, Jack Ball, you you were saying? No, no worries. I was saying that he just keeps mentioning how everyone who was called, it's just an innate feeling. He's, he was driven to go to this spot. Mm. And, and and when when did you when did you start to feel this? When did you when did you first uh, you know see that he hear that you know get so, this feeling? So that's so you see him struggle with that question. Right? Almost like you you know uh, it's like it's like that feeling of like where did the time go type thing right so he kind of when you ask him that it kind of snaps him back slightly into reality because he has to think about the here and now right because 
all of the stuff that he's been doing for however long he's been doing, like there's no calendar. There's no, it doesn't matter if it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It doesn't matter if it's winter, summer, the solstice doesn't matter if it's a celebration or a birthday. Right. And he, and, and you see him kind of, his head slouches down slightly, like in a, in a, in a manner of thinking. And he goes and he just, and you can see him just trying to put a timeline of some kind together. And he does this for about five or six seconds. And, and then he just kind of shakes his head and, and he says, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, none of that is relevant. None of the, all that matters is that I was, that I was called and I came. Well, and, and now you've been asking to attend tonight. I mean, you've been, Shut up, Jim. Been, you've, I put a, I put a goddamn window over his face. <laughs> I can't see him laughing. At least uh, I came. <laughs> Fuck's sake! And uh, so you've you know, you've been you've been be begging us to be returned. You know why? What what do you expect that Night Demon will do when you return? My elevation. It's mine. I've earned it. You want to becoming an abomination? What you call an abomination, we call a blessing. Mm. Have you seen the power? Have you seen? There's. The stronger you become, the easier it becomes to help the night demon to his end. And, uh, you know, what end is that? The night demon must return. Return to him whence he came or return to this realm? Well, you've said he's already returned. You need to get me by his side. I must help him in whatever his deeds are. But now, now that he has returned, now what are his ends? You are obviously blessed. You have seen his return. The five of you have seen his return. Very blessed. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, okay. I can't help but I find it amusing. I'll try and be an actor. And, and no, no, you're work. fine, Jim. You're good. I just, you know. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's funny. So, yeah, the, so he's, and, and, and as you kind of mentioned the Night Demon again and being in his presence, his eyes kind of steal, over, not steal, but like glaze over again. And you can see him like returning like full form friggin' cultist dude. Hmm. Like he's he's back on target again, right? So uh, you had a moment there though where Elliot where you jarred him a little bit. Yeah, but um I don't know. It's it's getting close to Steel Boy. I'm not sure the conversation will be too much more productive at this point, so I you know, I drift away from him and and that's the last chance we get to speak, I guess, before we enter Steelbury. Yeah, so um, so again, we talked about Steelbury a little bit last episode, right? When we first were coming in. Um, so it's it's a travel through the hills to the south. You 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 roll down the road, you hit a hill, you hit a, a small, not a thin trail. It's obviously used because there's there's imports and exports coming from Steelbury itself. Um, Elliot is very, very, very familiar. Elliot could find his way home now from this point blindfolded. Um, as a child, we mentioned this, he would have, he would have played in the hillsides, collecting, um, various forms of rocks, metals, probably helping with some, um, minor archeological digs that would help and have trained other in how to do correct archeological digs elsewhere. Right. So they wouldn't have found a lot of stuff around, but they've got to have a place to like say, okay, well, here's how you grid out a map. And, you know, uh, if you have a, you know, several hundred square feet and when we're trying to to document what it is we're finding. You know, you dig down one foot at a time. Here's how you preserve specimens, so on and so forth. And Ellie would have been would have been part of that as any young gnome would have. It would have been very, it would have been a lot of fun to go out and they give you, you know, your own little pick and your own little shovel. And as, I mean, everybody remembers as a kid kind of digging in the dirt, right? Sorry, mate. Um, uh, are we supposed to see Steelberry? Because I've got a black screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I pulled oh, it up. We, we I'm gonna open up your character screen. sheets here in a second. Oh, all right. she is. Um, so yeah, so Elliot, Lee, Elliot kind of takes the lead a little bit at this point. And he's like, oh yeah, straight down this road to the South, so on and so forth. Um, and Elliot, you, you guys, you reach a very familiar site. We covered this last episode. We'll kind of do it again. You reached a very familiar site, right? Is this beautiful stone carved archway in the, in the side of a, of a, I don't want to call it a mountain. It's a, it's a low ridge. Uh, maybe 50 feet high, maybe 100 feet high, the ridge itself, right? And there's all kinds of beautiful gnomish carvings along this entrance. 
um, including, you know, the, the name Steelbury and Gnomish across the top. I believe like three or four of you speak Gnomish, right? Goblin. They speak Goblin. They speak goblin, yeah. Or is it Goblin? Okay. I thought, okay, so, yeah. so Elliot would have been the only one then. Had we thought about it, we would have we would have all spoken like gnomish, goblin, and human, right? But we didn't. <laughs> yeah, because that's not meta. So um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think your character has the intelligence to learn any languages. Does he? <laughs> True. Good point. Wow. So um, so anyway, you, th this is a beautiful and and Ellie, you can't help but have a have a a, a bit of a um, an exhale, right? You're back home. Yes, it's earlier than you wanted it to be. Your sabbatical is nowhere near over, but you've had a lot of issues, right? You 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 left on on what you thought was going to be, I don't want to call it an adventure, but you didn't, you weren't planning on what happened to happen, right? Only six months after arriving in Victa, you were tasked with going with these uh, three other adventurers um, into checking out what at the time was Tillich Manor, and that has just turned your entire life upside down, right? You went from from capable um, artisan slash, you know, questioning my 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 faith in myself, cleric to, you know, losing your uh, your holy symbol and all of that good stuff, finding out that your master had passed away, um, allowing uh, I don't want to say allowing, but basically allowing Faps to die right in front of you, and that really turned you left of center, right? Well, now that you've come home, it's it's a little bit of a it's it's. You know, it's like when the kid comes home from the first year of college, right, and doesn't realize that he was going to get his ass kicked every Friday night at a bar. Um, so, you know, you re you return to Steelbury, Ellie, and how do you how do you kind of feel about that? Uh, yeah, I still feel you know pretty bad. I, I feel pretty bad the whole time, but I've I've been a bit obsessing about the whole night even thing. So the badness has kind of taken a bit of a bad seat, but I I kind of I both realize it's still there. As I re-enter Steelboy, and also realize it's lifted slightly as I see the the familiar home and smell the familiar smells, um, and you know, uh, d despite the fact that I was quite happy and excited to leave Steelboy and go on my adventures, I and given like you say what's happened uh, in between times, uh, I you know I feel very happy to return. And the first thing I do, you know, right at the entrance, they've got one of those like uh, you know uh, just like a you know wagon selling selling food. So I. I buy like some pork loins and some mashed potatoes, you know, a nice meal with the you know, uh, Yorkshire puddings and uh, uh, you know onions and green beans and Yorkshire, Yorkshire huh? <laughs> and, and and carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just I just you know I don't stay there. I just take it with us. I'm just like stuffing my face constantly as we uh, as we enter Stillbury. I'm looking forward to the, this. How you'll manage this role playing? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, right. He's got he's got Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> no Yorkshire I don't know where that was in our world, but that's okay. We can go with that. Where is this York you speak of there, uh, <laughs> Ellie the Nun? <laughs> yeah, so you um you obviously you walk in or you come down, you've got your wagon. Um you move down the entrance. It's a wide entrance, it's about 20, 30 feet wide once you go inside. The initial um um uh, cave entrance is about 20 feet wide, but you know, it's it, Jim and, and Jim, and, I'm sorry, Daka and Dimitra, you notice immediately it's, it's undefendable. There's no gates. There's no um, portcullis that could drop or, or raise. There's no drawbridge. There's no, there's nothing there that, that would make it capable of being defending if Steelbury were ever under attack. So either they never attacked or they're just not very, they just don't know what's going on as, as far as warfare is concerned, if that makes sense. Maybe we can come back and take over one day, Dimitrio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, so put so all you, the gnomes to the sword. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hey, fucking excuse me. <laughs> So you reach right in here. This is the very first place that you stop. This is Elliot knows this well. This is the gnome's rest. The I still gnome's can't rest. see, by the way. Yeah, yeah. it's because we're in the dark. It's because we're in the dark, Jim. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the dark. One, sec. one sec. I'm sorry. One sec. One sec. One sec. That's true. <laughs> I forgot because I just I remade the scene because I needed to do that for the map. One moment. Is it, is it nighttime? Is it? Is that why me and Jimmy <laughs> it's, it's, can't see? It's it? interior nighttime. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, another tunnel. We're going into another tunnel. 
He only a good above ground creatures with terrible eyesight. Mm. Okay, can you see it now? Yeah. I yes, can see glorious. It now. Okay, glorious. perfect. Sorry about that. Yeah, because I had to re because it didn't remember the map didn't work last time, so I I had to remake the whole scene. Yep, okay, so <laughs> like Elliot, I can see. <laughs> yeah, it's all right for you, bastards. <laughs> <laughs> this is the norm, right? So, um, when you reach the gnome's rest. The interior cavern, now you were slightly descending all the way in, right? But the interior cavern really opens up above you. We're talking some 50, 60 feet high. Now for gnomes, it doesn't have to be that high, right? Because most of their buildings, most of their um, um, dwellings, they're like six feet tall ceilings, seven feet tall. Like if you went into like a gnomish dwelling, now there are other locations where you can see if, if humans were to, and perhaps there are some humans who live here, perhaps some orcs. There are some larger buildings that would address your height, but you are in a gnomish um, enclave. Um, so even the two story buildings in a lot of cases would be a one story building where you guys are from. Mm -hmm. Um. But once you get inside, you also notice that most of the buildings, if not all of them, are in, they're encrusted in something. They're encrusted in, I, while I wouldn't call them gems and I wouldn't necessarily call them metal, maybe it's a glass or glass work. But there are, um, every building has at least on portions of every wall glass, um, reflective surface, we'll say. And there are braziers of many, many colors lit all over the place. There's reds, there's blues, there's oranges, there's greens. There's all of this all around you, right? And as the braziers emit light, and there's no heat coming from these braziers, but as they emit light, that light is bouncing off of each of the buildings and is creating a nice, it's almost like a soft dawn look. Where, in, where instead of having all the beautiful colors in the sky, the beautiful colors are kind of surrounding you, reflecting off of each of the buildings. Um, it, as you look at each other, on one side of a face might be a red hue, and on the other side might be a soft blue hue, depending on which buildings your, your, your faces are, uh, are, uh, are faced towards. Um, but it's, it's, quite, it's quite astoundingly beautiful. I mean, it, this is not really anything that any of you have, aside from, of course, Elliot, have ever been privy to in the past. Yeah, it's quite a sight. It's quite a town you have here, Gnome. It's, uh, I've not seen anything like it. Um, it's, it, it, is a, it is a wonder, you know. So many gnomes living together. You know, this is what gnomish ingenuity can create. How, how many... Is this like the whole gnome race? Or is there more towns like this? Yes slash no. Am I yeah, no, this is not the whole gnome race. <laughs> no, it's not the whole gnome race. Yeah, this is so. Uh. So um, let's go over that really quick. So, Elliot, here's what you would know about um, Steelbury. Obviously, you grew up here as a kid, right? As a child gnome. Mm. You grew up a here. A um, gnomeling. As a gnomeling. <laughs> as a nomad. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> oh, I, oh, I ain't nomad yet. You'll know. You'll know when I'm nomad. <laughs> So um, this is the Enclave of Steelbury. Um, it's one of a few that you know of. You know that there are more out there, right? Um, but this one specifically is in the hillsides of, of your area. Um, it is very, very, very well known for its wines, its mushroom wines, its mushroom liquors, its mushroom um, food stocks. Um, it's, 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 there is a large uh, farming portion dedicated in 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 the in the uh, community of steelbury it's also the location of the university of edin gnome now we know that the gnomes are somewhat known as the peoples of education right the, you 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 um you prize education very heavily in fact uh, more more so than just about anything um, a lot of this goes back to the fact that, you know, the gnomes were believed to be one of the first, if not the first race in the world, right? The oldest of, um, second, possibly only to the dragons themselves. Um, as a result, you've kind of taken it upon yourselves to become historians, to become archeologists, to become teachers of knowledge, to pass on this information, to become librarians, um, all of those different things, which... Um, which would naturally have to deal with history, whether it's gnomish history or, or history of Solarian itself, right? Um, 
obviously you've got the University of Edenome itself. Um, the University of Edenome has is one of the finest universities in Solari in itself. And there are many individuals, even outside of the Gnomish cultures, who come here specifically to study and or share information. There's also the Library of Edenome, which is probably, um, unless you visit somewhere else and find something bigger and better, probably the finest collection from a library in the known world. Right? Um, there's also several academies here um, where individuals would come, gnomes specifically. You know, you, you would have grown up um, from, you know, year two, year three, year five, starting to learn several aspects of the academies in order to see what you took a liking to, what you had a proclivity towards, what your talents kind of pushed you towards. And then you would have continued through the schooling from a young age all the way up to you know, finally yourself joining the Guild of Artisans, the Academy of the Artisans, right? Um, during that time, obviously, you, you, there's the, the thought process behind, you've got several um, religious locations, right? You've got the Temple of the Chief Engineer, which is the largest temple network here in, in Edenome. There's also the Temple of the Great Font, the Hearth Guardian, the Grave, and the Radiance. So each of these, each of these, worships the chief engineer and, and and again let's go back to that because worship isn't the right word right each of these has a different connection to the chief engineer yours is the most direct or is considered the most direct because of the aspects of artisanry and things like that because it was it's highly believed that the chief engineer um uh he wants this the most he wants the the gnomish peoples he or she wants the gnomish peoples to move towards artisanry, creation, um, connection, uh, building, finding new things, finding new pieces of knowledge and connecting those to the old, so on and so forth, if that makes sense. But there's also these other belief systems, right? The Hearth Guardian is, is believed to be the, the, um, the protectors of the gnomish peoples, right? These are the warrior priests, if you will. Um, the Temple of the Great Font deals with um, the direct connection to the powers of the chief engineer. So, um, so um, deciding and, and coming together with the actual, I don't want to call it the force because that's not the correct way to put it, but it's a power line, right? It's a power system that, that connects all things. And that's how you're connected to the chief engineer and the, and the, the, the Great Font is kind of what is is what it, it's a study of the actual power behind that right an electromagnetic field there you go so it's a study of that field and how the chief engineer is connected to your world right and then of course you've got the temple of the grave which is the understanding of birth life and death and then the temple of radiance which is which is which is the belief of 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 assisting and helping anybody and everybody around that's the healers that's the protectors, though not necessarily with sword and mace. Are we heading to the library? I mean, I thought we were trying to find out as much as we know about the old gods as possible, right? There's no time to waste, is there? We did talk, I think, about, uh, you know, leaving, uh, what's he called? Uh... How, how many days has it taken us to get here? Because we were, what, four Took days? Four days. So what are we on eight days then? In total. So it yep. So you're you're day eight down here now. Mm. So we got two. Remember days. the belief was, hey, it's going to be four days. We can't get back in time. And you're like, well, but wait, Elliot's got the ring. Yeah. Yeah. So we got two days to find out as much as possible about the old gods. So should should we head to the library, guys? Yeah. Like yes. Yeah. At once. Let's, yeah. Leave Elon guarding the uh, the. Uh... Yep. Elon, you guys were oh. just going to kind of leave him, and that's why I put the um, the gnomes rest there. We'll just we'll just say that again. We're not going to make anybody roll like we talked about last time. Nobody's just going to. He's not going to try to escape constantly. You're leaving him with Elon, so that the five. I'm sorry, the four of you can move on and um, and get over to the University of Edenome and kind of figure out things over there, right? Mm. Yeah, if possible. All right, so you come through the cavern here, right? You come through the cavern into the Ed into the University of Ed, and and Elliot again is kind of leading the way, right? And Elliot um, 
Ellie, you 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 walk in you walk into the opening expanse of what is the actual university, and it's it's a it's a, it's you you feel back at home, obviously, right? You've got the four great um, halls of learning. They're surrounded by the five other halls of learning, and then you have all of these dormitories where where you all would have would have lived while you were in your studies, right? Um, however, in the center of the um, in the center of the uh, university, in between the four halls, you see a great gathering of, of gnomish peoples, and you see a large stone. I don't want to call it a. a, a it's a large stone monument. And on top of that is a large platinum coffin um, with beautiful beams across all of its, its cornering. And it's, and it's made of soft blue glass that you can see through it. Don. <laughs> He's chewing. Role playing very well this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I don't go right up to the um to the to the uh to, to the to the plinth because i'm still eating i don't want to you know we're just standing there chewing and stuff but i i move up to yeah you know, between the adjacent building and um and, and just sort of stand a while you know for five or ten minutes or so and and watch Watch you know, the gnomes all gathered around, some gnomes coming, some gnomes going. Yep. Yeah. You know. So so, so it, it's a very interesting sight, right? Some gnomes coming, like you said, some gnomes going. Everybody as 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 you you actually get a, a, a standpoint where some of the classes have ended in each of these buildings, maybe one or two out of each building over the you know last fifteen minutes. And as each of the students kind of emerges to move either onto a different area or back to their dormitory. They all stop and pay a very, very short homage to, to the individual who was inside the coffin. Um, from this distance, it's 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 completely obvious who it is, right? This is Master Druthrig Cobblefoot's. This is where he's lying in state, as mentioned in your letter, for the one year. Oh man, right? Um, this is this is a very emotional time for you, Elliot. Obviously, you know this is you had no clue that he was he he had. Um, Whatever his condition was, I don't. Even, I don't believe he ever shared with you what that condition was. No, he kept it quiet. Yeah, and um, but you do see um, one familiar face next to it. You see, you see an old friend as a child. You see, you see Orver Leperzepper, and he's standing, right? He's standing kind of um, out of one of the corners. He was part of the Artisans Guild and actually flunked out, and he was a good friend of yours, and he went on to become. One of the priests of the hearth guard. Do I see him? I uh, finish my food, <laughs> and I, you know, I, I move over to him, um, and um, and I caught behind him and you know place my hand on his shoulder, and say, and go ahead. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My old friend, it's good to see you, you know, sooner than I expected, but yeah, I've so Orver, to spin, Orver spins around, right? And I mean, his eyes get really big, right? He's got these beautiful silver goggles with blue lenses in them. Um, he has, he's, he's in his ceremonial garb, right? He's got a beautiful um, gnomish steel breastplate. Um, and you notice that he's actually one of the captains now. Of the um, uh, within the uh, within the temple itself, and he looks at you and he's just he's amazing. So Elliot, Elliot, it's good to see. And he and he takes you in a really big embrace. I mean, you guys, like I said, you you were childhood friends. You spent a lot of time out in the hillsides together as kids, learning. Um, he really wanted to be an artisan, just like you. He kind of looked up to you in that regard. But when he just couldn't master some of the mathematics behind it, that was when he had decided that maybe his his um, um, his path lie elsewhere. Ellie, what are you doing back here so soon? What are you? It, don't take me wrong. This is fantastic, but what are you doing here? My friend, over my sabbatical was cut short. I travelled uh, after a few, um, you know, different stops. I travelled to the human city of Victor, and upon my arrival there, I was pressed 
into um, into 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 service with a, a band of adventurers um, investigating uh, an old uh, problem. Uh, when we when we arrived at our destination, we we were beset by all you know foul manner of cultists and and the like, uh, culminating would you believe it in the summoning of uh, of an old god, or so it claims. Uh, we are here to attempt to find a solution. So you mentioned the old gods, right? And, and he, the only part of that, so we'll, we'll say you took like 10 minutes, you know, briefly to just kind of go into summation. And the only part that he kind of raises an eyebrow to, like, what the hell is that? Was like the old gods, right? He's like, right? He doesn't recognize that by any means. Um, and then he looks up and he sees the other three companions, right? He sees, he sees this little goblin dude who's shorter than the gnome. Um, dressed in, in all, all dark, uh, dark gray, dark black finery. Um, he sees a member of the gray and he sees Dimitriov with his axe, right? And he looks at you and he says, things truly have changed, haven't they? He says, who are these companions with you? Uh, my friend, Orpha, let me introduce Dimitriov, the, uh, the, the lumberjack. Hello, I am Dimitriov. It is been quite an honor to uh to meet Eliod and uh for him to bring us here um I wish it was in better circumstances um our our time is of the essence we need answers as quickly as possible so he reaches up when the minute that, that as he introduces each of you he reaches up except for to um flargo because they're about the same height right but he reaches up dimitriov to you first because you're the first one to and he shakes your hand right it's a strong little son of a bitch Whoa. right he's you can tell his forearms are pretty jacked his arms are i mean he's been in, he's been doing some some work with the mace that's at his side as far as like training that's quite a grip you have there no And he and he looks at you and and he and he regards <laughs> he regards your axe obviously, and he looks over at, at Daka, and um and then he reaches up to shake your hand as well. I'll just shake his hand and be like hello. And again, you notice. I mean, a very 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 strong grip. He never breaks eye contact with you. This is a very confident gnome. Um, mm. As you guys are all being introduced, as you all uh, sorry, Dadel Green, as you all were introduced. Um, <laughs> You know, the, the gnomes around you kind of start to take a little bit of a step back because, you know, there's just these big guys in the middle of all of this. Um, Orver is somewhat well known, right? He's, he's, he's been in this community for a long time. He's never been on sabbatical. Um, and they're kind of giving you a little bit of space. And the gnomes, you notice, continue to come and go from Master Druthrig Cobblefoot's resting place. And, and you notice that some are, are placing down different items, some place down. Um, so, uh, beautiful arrangements of um, uh, of mar mushrooms, flowered mushrooms, flowering mushrooms, just different uh, versions of mushrooms that that the three of you, Elliot has seen them before, but the three of you have never seen. And there's some beautiful ones, right? There's greens, blues, oranges, ones with spots, ones with stripes, long ones, tall ones, short ones. They're just this amazing. Other individuals are putting down small pieces of 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 artwork um metal uh silver gold different things carvings made out of them some of them are um uh, maybe some ivories different things that you recognize everybody's leaving small items as a as a um as a level of respect and then elliot kind of looks up elliot you notice that that orver is actually the what may be considered like the captain of the current honor guard around his his um his resting place there's seven or eight other members of his temple and they're all in that same finery and there's they're walking slowly around just making sure that it's it's calm it's collected um and that they are showing honor as well and each of them instead of their usual finery over the tops of their breastplates, they're wearing the symbols of the artisans of the artisans guild itself. So this is something that you're used to. Whenever a a, a member of the um, I don't want to call it the aristocracy, that's not the right word, but somebody in high regard who passes away, they will send the honor guard, and then they will assume 
that uniform in honor to that individual. Okay, so <clears throat> as I've seen all of this around me, um, I wanted to pay homage to Elliot's Lost Master and also ease the crowd. So I have a chess set which I'm going to place on the ground with the rest of the uh, uh, the uh, what the, the tributes, I guess. I don't know what you call them. Yeah, tributes is about the best way to put it. Yeah. So, so, I'm, you're I'm gonna, gonna... so now this is a finely carved chess set. This is something you've had since you were a youth as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna pop that on the ground and uh, I'm gonna nod to the gnomes and I'm gonna slip off a bit, like you know, sort of back up, but give them time to see that. Yeah, I'm... so so it's interesting, right? So what happens is every has everybody seen um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind right at the very end when they all come off the oh. spaceship? Like, there's the one human and he's like, of Stop course, Elliot happens. What do you say there? <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> So many oh, spoilers yeah. from you all the time. Again, movie made in 1976. <laughs> I apologize if you haven't seen it yet. But, um, but yeah, so like, so when Dmitriev walks up, right, everybody's half his height, everybody. There's a human here or there, but as he kind of wades through this, this crowd of four or five deep, and they separate, you know, out of respect to him because he's being very respectful. He's walking slowly. Um, but all of these gnomes, each of them kind of looks up at it, and you see these different arrays of goggles, right? Red goggles, blue goggles, green goggles, silver goggles. Um, there are even some finely carved wooden goggles, but nobody is without goggles in this in the, in, the, in this entire place. And you, you kind of tell at that point that the goggles may be a symbol of not only honor and, and, um, and respect, but maybe even authority, almost like a badge in your world, um, Daka. So, you know, uh, Dimitrov, as you approach and, and th they separate, several of them start to nod in approval as, you know, somebody from the humans race has come here to honor him. That's their belief, right? They don't know why you're here, but somebody has come to honor him directly. And tell me about this. What's what is what are the pieces made out of on this chess set? Uh, they're like, it is a pretty fine chess set. It's it's. Um, I mean, obviously, being an axe man uh, or like a wood chopper and all that, I, I felled some of the finest trees, and it was a it was a dear old friend that made the set for me out of some of the wood that I'd gathered. Um, but they they're like pretty amazing, like the finely decorated and stuff, and you know, and uh, obviously it's a nod to their intelligence, right? I, I obviously appreciate how intelligent um, Elliot has been in my interactions with him and uh i just thought it was fitting i had it i'm, I'm not gonna really get an opportunity yeah. to play chess anytime soon and i i thought not with yeah. daka <laughs> definitely yeah. not with daka, yeah. <laughs> maybe drafts <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah but i also so... wanted to put them at ease a bit you know i, I want to put them at ease and like because obviously they're looking at us that we're big outsiders and whatever and we're not here for any yeah, well you stand out right it's like the opposite of Dadel, right Dadel goes to a human city and he kind of disappears right i mean people don't see him until he bumps into their kneecaps so um for you it's the complete opposite right if the if somebody was was say searching for you like they'd find you in a second right um but yeah there's 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 a lot of a lot of soft nodding um one of the um one of the members of the of the honor guard gives you a, a very deep nod and a lot of people a lot of people a lot of gnomes after you kind of egress back over to elliot they walk over and they take a knee and they start inspecting they know they don't touch it but they're looking at the the crafting of the different pieces of this beautiful chess chess set and it really is quite beautiful right you 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 had you had kept it in a in a means that made it possible for you to travel and battle and it wouldn't come, you know, so, and, and maybe you even took the five minutes of setting the pieces all up perfectly and correctly, right. As you take, took them out of the case. Um, and they're inspecting it on one knee. They don't, again, they don't touch it. They don't get any closer than about six inches, but they're all kind of looking at it. And it, there's a lot of you, you've, you've done something that's very honorable in their eyes this day. Dak has got nothing to give except scimitars. <laughs> <laughs> you scimitar. you drop the shittiest scimitar possible. Here you go. Some rusty scimitar. Oh, what is scimitar? <laughs> no, no. Does he like? Does he need stilts? 
be, they'll be like long swords to like the gnomes though, won't they? They'll be like Bro, it's oh. be great swords to the gnomes. Yeah, great uh, sword, yeah. yeah. Well, as as uh, as as Dimitriov puts the uh, the chest set down and and backs away, I I give him a nod. I recognise that you know he's he's not a gnome and you know he he doesn't need to do something like that, but. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm very glad he is, and it means a lot to me that he did. Um, and I and I go forwards and put down my mechanical scroll with claws for hands, one of which clacks and the other one which doesn't, <laughs> and leave that there. No, and this is uh, and again, right? This is something that we uh, we make the assumption that Elliot has been working on nightly, e even a little bit, right? Maybe polishing a piece here, adjusting a screw there, um, tightening a spring, you know, things like that, right? Because it's it's easy to make. But it's it's tough to perfect, mm -hmm. um, and Elliot is recognized as as a master of 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 um, of, uh, of artisanry, right? And when he lays down, or when he what is what's the what type of metal is it made out of, Elliot? Uh, uh, master of anatomy. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> school anatomy. I know. I know all about no anatomy and worm anatomy <laughs> and goblin anatomy. Just quietly. <laughs> um, it's 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 I made. I them in my sleep, are you? <laughs> it's it's made mostly out of copper. Um, since the arts, the the tool of my trade for the most. That's the other my my metal of choice for now, for the most part. Mm. Yeah, so it's and but it's it's I would assume like it's highly polished, right? It's very well, maybe maybe two very 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 small, very low worth, but very small gem encrusted eyes, something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So as you lay it down again, um, Orver kind of walks over with you, right? As you start to approach, because Orver knows who this is in relation to you, right? This is this is your this is essentially your father as far as far as it comes from an educational standpoint. You spent, and you're, maybe your mind goes back to to the many, many hours that you spent, whether it was at the Gnomes Rest or at the Artisans Academy, or even in the halls of engineering, having conversations about, you know, artisanry, engineering, the chief engineer. Um, you know, maybe you have, maybe, maybe in one regard, you have a small giggle as you remember, you know, maybe a funny time, but then you, you, a small tear comes out of your eye when you remember, you know. A, a sad time and that, that he is no longer with you and Orver accompanies you. He always keeps his, his right hand on your left shoulder. And even as you kneel down, right. And this is an immense sign of respect that he's taking that journey with you. And you place that, that squirrel, you place the squirrel down in front of, um, in front of master Cobblefoot's um, last resting place. Uh, so I place it down and I, you know, back up and I, you know, I stand up and I, I back up a few feet. Yeah, you know, I just take another look at the, uh, at the, uh, the, the monument. Um, and, uh, you know, I found okay. out about. Yep, give me a perception check at advantage. Oh, exciting. Exciting until you roll an eight. <laughs> It's just, so that's an eleven. Okay, so it's it's right. It's it's nothing less than you would expect. The actual monument itself is about six eight feet high, which is tall for gnome, right? Um, Elliot and I'm sorry, Dimitrov and Daka can both kind of make out the lower half of of uh, Druthrig in there, but you would have to take several steps back in order to view the the body itself, right? And he's laid in a he's in he's in his finest graduation ceremony. Um, um, clothing and he's laid to rest it's a beautiful sight right his arms are crossed across his chest um, he's got his both his symbols of the academy of artisans and the um, the chief engineer um, he's got his favorite um, his favorite boots on I mean, him everything that you remember of him everything that 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 made him what he was from his 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 stature is there but you have different memories of him, right? You have memories of him when he was more relaxed. You have different memories of him when he just had his leathers on and you were having these conversations, right? Everybody around, <laughs> God damn Jim, everybody around. Did he, did he um, do a score field with Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> everybody around, like this is how they, they more knew him, right? You, you, you had a very, very different relationship with him. Um, you noticed several other of the, uh, of the masters of the other schools 
on occasion come up and place their own items down as well. Um, and then you also notice it, you, you kind of snap back into it and that, you know, there is another hallway down to the south of you all that does lead to the uh, the great library at the University of Edenome. Again, another location you've spent a great deal of time in. Flargal, is there anything that you're doing? I mean, are you just tagging along at this point? What's what's Flargal doing? I am uh, very, very curiously observing everything that I see. It's obviously like a very different experience from uh, the shitty uh, talents of the humans. Um, wow. I mean, I say shitty because like they're dirty and they're crowded and they're like not always planned out meticulously like this is very very different from that and it's like um also very different from uh the uh the experiences of uh the goblin um civilization right um life as a in a goblin community is also very very like chaotic um whereas here it's very very uh like i've been i'm not like, strict is kind of the wrong word but it also like encapsulates everything right it's uh it's very like yeah everything makes sense in the places there um that things are put um and like buildings erected and stuff like that so yeah i'm i'm keeping a keen eye on uh, on how things are structured, um, thinking about like both how to uh, enter said buildings and uh, also uh, about um, how to construct like a golden uh, community. Uh, yeah, and and you're right. Goblin communities are they are very chaotic, right? They're very yeah. very chaotic. They're it's almost like, a, like where, where where can I find inspiration here? What can I bring back? And like, or you, like, what can fit in a golden community? Uh, that's what I'm looking for. So what is it? What is so, Elliot? You you're done with your? I'm also very very curious about the goggles. What is the pro? Like, what is the pro? properties of the gobble, gobble, um, goggles like what why are everyone wearing goggles ellie do you are you asking this or is this a um is this in your mind's I'm, eye I'm, I'm, I'm curious about it i am not asking it but i'm like seeing that everyone has different goggles but everyone's wearing goggles it's like something that stands out and it's something that's that i'm keeping like a close i'm keeping close attention to make uh, to like what, why and what are these goggles? Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so no, and that's a, that's a very good point, right? So um, you also notice, um, uh, Flargo Snarp, that in your just just well, while Dimitra seems to be more focused on Druthrig, while Daka is just kind of surveying a little bit here and there, and while Elliot's doing what he's doing. You're really taking a look around, right? And you notice, man, every gnome, their 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 clothing is meticulous. Their armor, if they're wearing it, is meticulous. Their um their school garb, which is generally to say white robes with black trim, very meticulous. They all have each of them that is going to school at this time has two or three large books and tomes in their arms, right? They're very, very focused individuals. Yeah. Very much in the here and now. And in a different way that they're in the here and now than I am. Very different. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm keeping like that is that is an interesting observation that I make. And it's making me more curious about this society and also like what I'll find inside these buildings. So Elliot, what happens next? You've you've paid homage. Um what do you do next? Yeah, well obviously. Once I saw the memorial and realized what was going on, I wanted to come over. And, you know, I spent a, a short amount of time um, speaking to all of my friend who I, who I met. Um, and, you know, we all 
we all spend a, a few moments there, but not too many because we're here to do something right. Yeah, so definitely. I, and, I, I and turned to the I'm, I'm, Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I just turned to the group and uh, glance around at them and, you know, they probably like nod their heads at me or something and, you know, we decide it's time to go, I think. Yeah, and, and and obviously they would allow you the time to do what you, because they, you know, they, they've come to know you. They know that, you know, it, it's, it's respectful. Um, so do you head straight to, do you go straight to the library? Do you go to the halls of engineering? What do you, what does Elliot think is the right move? Because they're very much in your territory, right? If you were in a different city, you would be following Daka or Dimitrov around. If you were in a goblin enclave, you'd be following Flargal. Yeah, we, we want to visit the, the head librarian, right? The chief librarian, I think, who, um, who uh, uh, um, Rolock mentioned. Um, so um, I assume the chief librarian's at the at the library. Yeah, the, you would know that the chief librarian resides at the library, as we mentioned last time. The chief librarian carries no gnomish name anymore. Once you are elevated to the chief librarian, you are literally the chief librarian, and it is a position for life. Um, life that is ended, you know, by natural means or otherwise. You know, some some librarians have died in battle um, a long time ago. Obviously, it is not something that is an overly dangerous position. But you know, once you once you are elevated to the chief librarian, there's never more than one chief librarian. Though there are um, four seats below that librarian that handle the day to day operations of the library itself. The chief librarian's task is literally to maintain the focus on the collection of knowledge for the University of Edenome and the Library of Edenome itself. And that's knowledge of all kinds. That's whether that's getting speakers here, whether that's getting tomes, whether that's getting archeological digs dug, whether all of that eventually comes back here. Yeah, well, I, I turn to my compatriots and say, you know, let's, let's seek out the, the chief librarian. Let's uh, let's head to the library. How okay. big is the uh, dinner gnome? Pretty pretty big. I've uh, got through the uh, the meat and the onions and the mashed potatoes and the um, Yorkshire puddings and the uh, uh, the carrots and the green beans. I'm just finishing the uh, the mm -hmm. oh, That's an incredible feast you have. Yeah, that's a hell of a meal. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Yeah, I mean, you've role played it really well as well. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Just don't I mean, throw up on the, uh, on the, on the chief librarian's presence. <laughs> Flargle's imagining it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you um you walk through this this um this pathway that leads to the library of Edenome, and when it's when this pathway opens up, it's another beautiful cavern. Though this one is quite a bit taller. This one's about 60, 70 feet tall. There's four or five levels of the universe of I'm sorry of the Library of Edenome, but these levels are all about ten feet tall. You can tell that this location was made so that just about anybody, with the exception of maybe the giants, would be able to get in and get out of there. Whether it's to study, whether it's to drop off items, whether it's whatever. This is very much a building that's 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 not made specifically for gnomish use. As we pass through the um, the um, the passageway, you know, and out into the opening where the library is, I I kind of take a sort of you know a, 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 a mental you know breath, you know, as is one of my favorite places in Steelbury, and uh, and I and I even even at this moment of graveness, even in my mental state, you know, I say, you're yeah, welcome, you're yeah, welcome. Well, welcome to my home, you know, to my compatriots. Welcome to, uh, you know, welcome to the library of, uh, of Steelbury. Yeah, so you walk up to the steps, right? And there's, there's a few, three or four, it's a beautiful building, right? Just as beautiful as all the others, but even more so. There's not a sharp corner on the building. It's very, it's just, it's, it's, I mean, you would know that this is a building held in high regard. You walk through the front doors, the interior opens up, right? And it's, there's a small hall, maybe 20, 30 feet deep, that opens up to a large circular room on the inside. And that large circular room is, is, is maybe 100 feet across at, at its widest, right? And on the left side, you can walk straight down the center. There's nothing in the middle of this. And there is a large um, uh, 
area of study at the end of that hallway. You know, there's tables, there's chairs, so on and so forth. On the left and on the right of, of the circular area in the center, you notice that there are stairwells that lie in the left and the right, but only go on that half of the arch of the circle, if that makes sense. And then on each of those levels are just crazy amounts of bookshelves, and they're just chock full of books. There's books, there's scrolls, there's all kinds of, I mean, it's, it's insane the amount of literature in this library. So um, where where's the library master or the the guy that um, like runs the gaff? I'm sorry, say again. I couldn't hear you. Dude. Where, where's the where's the guy that runs the gaff? Where's the uh, okay? The so librarian? so Ellie, you don't you don't see the chief, the great librarian, the chief engineer. You don't see the great librarian immediately, but you do notice um, some of those who are responsible directly beneath the chief librarian and. Um, I'm sorry, the great librarian. You notice um, the seat of tablets specifically. You notice Carvis Markin. Carvis is a is a um, an, an older female gnome. Um, she's dressed in, in very beautiful finery as well. Um, she's got beautiful, beautiful blue goggles um, with blue um, um, glass inside of them. And you could even tell that she probably has some of the steely ice blue eyes that you've ever seen beneath those goggles. Everything kind of matches. It's very, very, um, very interesting. And she is the keeper. I'm sorry, the seat of the tablets. And the tablets would be anything that actually predates paper and or the written word. So this would be something, you know, if you found tablets um, carved into steel, tablets carved into stone, artwork that was carved, um, reliefs, things of those nature she would be specifically responsible for those items. That could be a good place to start, yeah? That sounds older than paper. Yeah, I point I point, uh, I point, Carvis out to the party and say, you know, there, there's Carvis, she's the seat of the tablets, you know. She might have the information that we, we're seeking and and, and we, we go over to her. So Carvis, she noticed, so before you even get near her, she notices obviously Dimitri and Daka, like right away, right? Okay, something new is coming. Then she sees Elliot and then she sees um, Flargo Snark. But when she sees Elliot, she kind of fixates, fixates on Elliot a little bit, gives a soft nod and then starts to approach as well. Oh, young Elliot, I knew you would be coming. They, uh, we had heard mention from Rolock that you would be coming our way. And, who, who are your companions? Carvis, it's 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 good to see you. Um, this is uh, these are my uh, companions who you know I've been traveling and adventuring with. This is this is Dimitri of uh, the Axeman and Daka of the Grey and Flagglestarp the Goblin. My friends, this is Carvis Mark and Seat of the Tablet. And she immediately she she takes a step back and does a very deep regal bow. Right, is this this very formal bow um, that Elliot would recognize within the gnomish community. But it's not something that is seen typically outside. This is this is a this is a deep sign of respect, and a welcome into his or her home, and that you are you're welcome to be. You don't even have to ask for permission to walk in the door any longer. I return right. the bow. Okay, so give me a performance check. Uh oh. <laughs> Can't wait for Daedal's dice. That's a... <laughs> yeah, this wait. is what I've, I've been waiting for Daedal to get involved here. Let's see what happens. Here. <laughs> Critical he's got, bow he's failure. A solid charisma score. I mean, Daedal, Daedal's not stupid in these regards, right? Daedal dislocates his back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, he got a 15. That's pretty damn good, right? So, Daedal, you get, you get it about 90% right. You can't emulate... Um, perfectly what it is because she's been doing it for years upon years upon years and she immediately regards you and then offers you i mean she immediately walks over offers her hand and friendship to you right away i mean this is not something that is she knows she's like dude this is a goblin what the hell's going on but then this goblin has attempted to embrace the gnomish ways in respect for her i'm uh, i'm very very respectful uh, and I uh, try to uh, be as uh, gentle and, 
and timid as I can when I ask her, um, do they have like a separate uh, section for uh, scrolls and texts uh, written in Draconic? I, um, I I just glance at Daedal and give, <laughs> right? and give or, or Flagglestarp and just think, who's this goblin? Like I don't I don't remember this from our travels. This is unusual. <laughs> so I just I just I just cast a a knowing look of what's going no, no, on. That's true, right? Because you've never uh, up until now. He's You've not, never uh, seen yeah. Flargle turn the charm on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I just Ever. spin him a look. I just spin him I, a look. Is, like, who is that? This is the guy who took the water bottle out of the out of the the cultist hands, right? Right. <laughs> not not three days ago. <laughs> this is the guy who every time you're trying to give something to him uh, to be polite to him and try to get him to talk, he will try to walk up and take it from him immediately, right? I'm just letting He's, him know I'm suspicious. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, so she immediately recognizes. You see her kind of take a, a a look to your left shoulder, then to your right shoulder, and she notices your your scales coming out of the top of your cloak that that come up and kind of. She doesn't. You know what she's looking at, right? Enough people have looked at you that you know she's not trying to be rude. And she immediately says, "We do have quite." A selection on the draconics on the draconic languages and the draconic peoples. We do. Can you uh, lead me in that direction? So let's 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 take a quick step back because she's not going to want to leave until Elliot. So she turns back and she says, "We would be more than happy to share what we have with you. Just please keep in mind that no tomes, no knowledge is to leave this location without without specific permission of the uh, of the the great librarian." And if you have anything to grace the library, it is always a welcome gift. And she turns to Elliot and she says, I understand that you are looking for some knowledge. However, I was under the impression that there would be five of you. Did you lose one of your companions on the way? Uh, that is my, um, my, my guard, my, uh, my companion. Um, we left him with the cart and the horse. Like, obviously, they needed tending to, so... Ah, okay, good. I was, I was, I was hoping that that no one lost their life along the way here while you were coming for this knowledge. So, Elliot, and and she gives you that same deep, flourishing bow again, the one that she returned to Dadel. She said, "We were made aware that you need information on what some would refer to as the old gods, or at least one claiming to be an old god." Yes, we met with this uh, creature approximately eight days ago. Uh, he has set us some impossible decision and demanded an answer within two days from now. Any information you can provide us with urgently would be would be very much appreciated. We are at lost how to deal with this situation. Well, you, you, you do understand that four days is not a great deal of time to try to... And she, she turns around and, and just, you know, she... The amount of knowledge here. And she says, and this isn't even in the catacombs below. Most of what I oversee, most of what I purvey over is in the catacombs below. And, and, and you can imagine trying to move those tablets around, trying to seek the knowledge upon them is much different than opening a book. I appreciate that what we ask of you is, uh, is unreasonable, but this unfortunately is an unreasonable matter. Um, you know, uh, I, I fear that you know, not, not only are the lives of those that Night Demon has captive in peril but perhaps the lives and the livelihoods of everybody on this world so at that point a door in the back of the library opens up and you see the great librarian emerge right dimitriov um Daedal, daka you would know knowing you know from what you have seen <laughs> who's, who's that <laughs> These are the big goggles with the star shapes on the end outside of that. So it's, it's Elton John. <laughs> so yeah, what yeah. you see is <laughs> right. what you see. So you're you're getting somewhat used to the regal, the pomp and circumstance that goes along with the gnomish cultures and knowledge, right? So when you were first entering um, um, Steelbury, it was much more a common gnome right there were individuals in 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 nice clothing you know they were still took care of themselves in goggles and hats and and all of that 
as you got into the University of Edinburgh, you saw that things got much, much more formal, right? And now that you're in the great library, or I should say the library of Edinburgh, it's even more so formal. And this individual em emerges, and you know immediately, I mean, he's got this beautiful, crazy silver beard that literally down to his feet, and he's holding it halfway up as he walks, right? A beautiful big mustache that, that disappears into it, sideburns that disappear into it. And he's got a, um, he's got a, it's, it's probably platinum. In fact, Elliot, you would recognize it immediately as platinum. He's got a platinum headpiece that's covering his skull. His skull has to be shaved because it is tight to his skull, right? And it's got, um, it comes down just slightly above his sideburns. Um, it, it, it goes down to the back of the top of his skull and it's covering his skull and it is and it is perfectly polished and it's reflecting everything that kind of comes off of it. Uh, greetings, great librarian. Um, we seek you in an, an hour of need. Uh, we have a great problem at hand. You know, is there anything you can help us with? Okay, so... Last episode, Dimitriev said that every one of my NPCs has speech impediments. <laughs> right? <laughs> Out of character, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go the opposite direction here. <laughs> oh. oh, I can't wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so we'll learn this I, I, give him, I give him three sentences <laughs> until he turns into Tyson. Until I return to the speech impediment. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> So the chief of the chief engineer, the great librarian approaches and um, Elliot, you, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that you, that I'm not going to, I'm not going to penalize you for not doing this. You would know to do it. You give him a very, very deep bow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, there's this, and it's, and this is from your time as a student. And he looks up and he goes, Elliot the Nom. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. You have finally returned to us. No, I did not think it would be this fast. Elliot, I was informed by Rolock that you would be coming, and I have set to task those here in the library to try to find as much as we could of the old gods. I fear that there may not be much as of yet, but there are many, many hands scouring the scrolls, the tablets, and even some of the books in your need. However, let's not speak of this out in the open, please follow me to my office. We can speak there more freely. How was that, Demi? Is that better? D didn't you mute Demi? Didn't get to the. Third. You're muted, Demi. You can't do it. You can't do that to me. There, there was a point that you nearly <laughs> slipped in. Yeah. Like I, I could <laughs> see, I could hear it. And, and only did two <laughs> sentences, so we didn't get yeah. to the third one. Where he's yeah, gonna break. Like, Those were two. Like, that was a lot of sentences. That wasn't just I two. I can't believe you. I got a quash ball. <laughs> <laughs> and he turns his back and he starts to walk towards his office um carvis walks with him and um you notice elliot you kind of look in fact the whole party kind of looks around a little bit and you notice there's a lot of movement in the library there's people moving around there's people grabbing books there are students and there are people who you can tell are in study but there are individuals who are who are looking for they have they have parchment in hand looking. They must be searching for things. And every now and then somebody yanks a tome and then immediately brings it back down the stairs and goes into another office and emerges without that tome and then heads back up the stairs again. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I, nod, I nod to the great librarian and say, uh, you know, thank you for the invitation. Let's go at once to your office. So he, I, uh... he goes... Go ahead. I tap Elliot on the, the shoulder and I, 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 I crouch over and whisper in his ear and saying, perhaps some of your friends could help us in this matter and we could get these guys to, you know, try and help us find. Like, there's a lot of stuff here. What do you reckon these guys will help us find stuff about Night Demon? My, my, my personal friends, you mean? No, uh, I just the, mean the names. Like if if, oh. if we can if we can come across to your um library champion bloke, mm. um, 
like come across well and like the importance of our task like we've only got two days there's a lot of people here like perhaps we could get them to chip in i mean it's no secret what we're dealing with right Mm. like no yeah i mean i think some already are but yeah we could definitely try and employ more of them in our service yeah yeah so that was the insinuation dimitrov is that you notice that there's people yeah there's so while you can tell the difference between the people who are grabbing books to study and individuals on task to grab specifics Ooh. and then bring them to what okay. what Sorry. you what, no no you're good you're good you're good because I'm glad because just in case anybody else didn't realize that right that's a good question that the, maybe they're not helping you specific maybe not all of them are helping you but you're you looking at it and it's a very it's like ants working right they're they're very on task they're up the stairs they're to a, a location they're looking at a piece of the parchment they're grabbing something they're back down they're you know what I mean it's there's very much a focus going on here. So while they may not all be studying the quote unquote old gods or night demon, they may have four or five other you know things that they're currently researching. This is a, a, a library of great learning and, and deposit. Um, you, are, you are very, very confident, especially with how you've heard everybody talk about how Roloch the Knuckle has sent um, word of you in advance that this is this is a task that has probably been going on for at least three or four days in, in advance of you, and it still goes on. Well, that's even better then. All right, so that is an hour and thirty. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and see what the uh, what the great librarian says. Uh, let's see. I, I'm recommending that Flargo Snarp go drink some Nyquil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Night oil? Nyquil. <laughs> it puts you to sleep. I'm joking. <laughs> Michael, never heard of it. Yeah, it's oh my American, God. right? Yeah. It's very American. Very American. Yeah, yeah, let's take our first. Let's take our first break. Let's take our break real quick. We'll be back in about five minutes. Yep. Cheers. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.